the manual resistive tests for the rotator cuff start with the supraspinatus. In this case, the athlete is standing comfortably. This could also be done sitting, by the way. Uh, arms hanging at the side. The practitioner will stabilize on the arm just above the elbow. The other hand is uh, stabilizing the hip on the opposite side. And the athlete begins slowly to try to abduct the arm. So you're going to press out against me. Continuing to build to a strong contraction. Hold it just like that. Does that bother you at all? Does that hurt? No. Mm -hmm. Kind of no, sort of maybe. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. It might hurt more if you worked harder. Okay. Yeah. All right. And relax. So pain or weakness or the apprehension that maybe there's going to be pain could be regarded as a positive sign. One of the common tests for supraspinatus tendinopathy or impingement is called the empty can test. In this test, the athlete raises both arms into about 90 degrees of abduction and 30 degrees of forward flexion, which is considered to be the scapular plane with the thumbs pointed toward the floor. This would be as if pouring out an empty can. So, Sammy, I'm going to have you bring your arms up first here. Let's bring starting neutral. And then just bring your arms up and forward a little bit into about 30 degrees of abduction. Hold there. Does that hurt you at all to be there? I'm going to press down on both arms. So now we're testing both arms together. And she's good and strong. Any pain on either side? A little bit on the left. A little bit on the left. Okay, and relax. You're being a good sport. So she has some pain on the left with supraspinatus. That's two tests so far that are we would consider positive for supraspinatus issues of some kind. We don't know exactly what yet. In some cases like this, there's no pain during the isometric work, but there is pain on release, which didn't happen here. Sometimes the client will just exhibit a lot of weakness when trying to do this test. So this is the supraspinatus empty can test. The next test in the manual resistive series for the rotator cuff is for the subscapularis, which is a medial rotator of the humerus. This is best performed with the athlete standing, but it can also be done sitting. We're going to have Sammy bend her elbow to about 90 degrees and keep the elbow in against the side. The subscapularis is a medial rotator, and in this position, medial rotation is this direction. So the resisted test is with the joint held in neutral, and I'm stabilizing her elbow against her side and holding at the inside of her wrist, and I want you to start slowly and pull your hand toward your tummy. Just make it rotation. There you go. And if there is pain or discomfort or weakness, that would be a positive test. And relax. You're good and strong there. Does that bother you at all? Okay. Why don't you stand with your feet a little bit farther apart so you're more stable? The next test for the rotator cuff is for infraspinatus, which is an external rotator. So we are going to have the client, again, standing with the elbow bent to about 90 degrees, elbow in against the side. Since infraspinatus is a lateral rotator, I'm going to have Sammy att attempt to do this motion. So we want to be sure she's rotating the humerus and not trying to lift the arm off her side. So you're going to start slowly and press out, rolling, hold, 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 hold it just like that. We want her to do maximal effort if it doesn't hurt. You okay here? Does that cause pain? Okay. No pain at all. And relax. So pain, weakness, faltering, uh, apprehension would all be considered to be positive tests for infraspinatus. If you liked this video and you want to see more, make sure to subscribe below and don't forget to hit the notification button.